this question gives you some it, it's a written as a tutorial question so it's uh, giving you some guidance help with a lot of its calculations um, so let me work through that um, it's uh, giving you the so this is question number six it's telling you the normalized ground state wave function psi of zero x is um let me write it this way uh and omega over pi again i'll write down h bar for h over 2 pi here it's written as h over 2 pi because the grading system doesn't recognize h bar um, exponential of minus m omega over 2 h bar squared yeah i hope you recognize this functional form and what's different now is the question has given you the, the normalization constant as well okay and um uh, and it says it exhibits the minimum possible uncertainty and as we go through this tutorial exercise we will show that that it actually does work out that way all right, um, mathematical preliminary. Oh, yeah, at some point I'll need to be able to do this integral. And I could always do it using computer algebra system. But uh, I want you to illustrate a particular mathematical trick that allows you to um, do this sort of calculation quickly and easily by hand. And that's what part A is walking you through. You do have to start out with some foreknowledge um, that this particular integral, uh, which is actually not easy to do, e to the minus alpha x squared dx, um, it's a widely known integral. This is what's called the Gaussian function. And I think in calculus three, you learn of a, a technique using three-dimensional integral to work out what this is. So assuming you've covered this somehow and know that the formula for this is square root of pi over alpha, you can actually derive a related, in, uh, related integral of this form. The related integral being integral over all space of x squared e to the minus alpha x squared dx. So this is how you do it. You Imagine taking this expression and differentiating it with respect to alpha. You know, forget for the time being that alpha is a constant parameter. We are treating it like a variable. And when you do that, on the left-hand side, you can swap the order of the integral and derivative for well-behaved functions. This is something you can do. I think there's a theorem and calculus that proves that for um, uh, proves that for the um, uh, for well-behaved functions. <laughs> so, uh, but we're gonna take that for granted. So, when you swap the order of integral and derivative, what you have is derivative with respect to alpha of e to the minus alpha x squared. So, treating this as my variable, the integral. I mean, sorry, derivative there becomes um, minus x squared minus x squared e to the minus alpha x squared d. So this is the, I'm using chain rule. This is the derivative of the inside, derivative of the outside for exponential didn't change. So it, that, this portion is what the question is looking for, minus x squared. Okay, that's the left-hand side. For the right-hand side, you have to work out um, so this is a square root of pi that's constant. I can ignore that. Uh, so what I'm taking derivative of is the polynomial function of alpha to the power of minus uh, one half. So the derivative of that is going to be minus one half, and then um, and then alpha to the power of this minus one, so minus three half. So uh, let me choose to write it so that it's all under square root. So it's going to be uh, pi over alpha to the third power. 
So that's gonna look this way. Minus one half times square root of pi over alpha to the third power. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. And uh, you do have to go one more step to actually derive the formula that you will need. And um, oh, I guess it turns works out to be just uh, canceling out this minus sign common on both sides. And let me actually simplify this a little bit more into square root of pi over 4 alpha to the third power. I think that's going to be useful in a couple different uh, places. Um, because I'm kind of looking at this and <laughs> doing... Anyways, um, so that was an A, just uh, as it's saying, mathematical preliminary, making sure you have the right integration formula that you will need later to do this by hand. Okay, so it says, calculate the expectation value using the normalized wave function psi naught of x. So... The formula here is simple enough. This is the procedure you learned of calculating expectation value. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> I need to be able to see the wave function while I'm writing down. So the expectation value of some operator x squared is going to be equal to integral over all space of the, the wave function complex conjugate or in this case, this wave function is real. So, so it's just going to be the wave function itself. Fourth root of m omega over pi h bar times exponential of minus m omega over 2 h bar x squared. It's the wave function times the operator for x squared, that's simply multiplication by x squared, times the wave function again, that's going to be, let me write, wait, writing it x, as x looks super confusing, times, uh, I need to write it on the second line, so it's going to be the same thing again, square root of 4, I'm sorry, uh, fourth root of m omega over pi h bar times exponential of minus m omega over 2 h bar x squared a dx all right uh, that's uh, my entire expression and staring at it so the multiplication by x squared doesn't depend on ordinary commutes so i can just combine these two wave function forms without uh, without too much problem so let me do that simplification so i have um so th this is what i have these two coefficients multiply and they are constant so i'm gonna pull it out of the integral i have a square root of m omega over pi h bar and then integral of from negative infinity to infinity x squared and when i multiply together the two exponential terms this uh, factor of 2 in the denominator goes away. So it's going to be exponential of minus m omega over h bar x squared dx. And this is where I use the integration formula that we derived. Um, this integral is going to end up equal to square root of... Um, <clears throat> pi over... 4 and in let me write down the reciprocal of alpha squared uh, alpha to the third power so alpha is m omega over h bar so the reciprocal is h bar over m omega to the third power so m to the third and omega to the third all right so when you imagine this uh, first coefficient multiplying to this uh, second term that comes from the integral, you see quite a few cancellations. Pi is cancel, one factor of omega, uh, h bar cancels out one factor here, one factor of omega cancels out one factor here, one factor of n cancels out one factor here. So, oh, this is h bar over 2m omega squared. 
So this whole thing is just the um, h bar over 2m omega. That's my uncertain, sorry, um, x squared, which uh, for this state, as explained above, it um, as explained, wait, where did I explain it? Oh, as explained here, um, <laughs> Uh, the expectation value of x squared is the expectation value of the, the standard deviation squared. So, all right, uh, I'll just write out h bar, h over 2 pi, divided by 2 times m times omega. And uh, let me leave it up to you to work, uh, see that this is the correct unit, that this combination of factors does give you the length squared unit. Yeah, let me leave that for you. Um, and uh, let's work out C. So for part C, I have my part B on screen so that I can uh, copy over the parts that are as needed. So the expectation value of momentum squared is going to be um, integral over all space of the wave function and because momentum has the the position derivative in it i has i have to be especially careful uh not in ordering the terms i have to make sure that i have my operator um, momentum squared which would be this thing squared so minus i squared is minus one h bar squared is well h bar squared and then position derivative the second order position derivative applying to this wave function square root of i'm uh, sorry fourth root of m omega over i h bar e to the minus m omega over 2 h bar x squared um, integral over dx Oh, um, yeah, this is gonna. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking at this uh, second order derivative, and um, I'm gonna do this partially using um, computer algebra system. So let me first simplify this a little bit. I can pull out the um, constant coefficient, um, the fourth root times the fourth root becomes a square root of m omega over pi h bar. Let's see here, this exponential will remain the same. Oh, oh I should have pulled out minus h bar squared. So let me write this out here. Equal to minus h bar squared. Um, all right, so this portion, the derivative, second order derivative of this, um, I'm gonna do that on my, <laughs> Uh, computer algebra system because I don't want to do it by hand. I do know I can do it. So it's exponential of minus alpha x squared second order. Okay, that's what I have. All right. Um, I, okay, so that's my expression. Uh, let me just uh, preserve this uh, e to the minus alpha x squared. That's going to combine with this first one. And for in between, this is what I have. Integral of negative infinity to infinity um, for alpha squared. So here I have to be careful here. This is my alpha squared. Oh wait, I guess that's what I was using before. So yeah, so let me write this all out. Um, four times alpha squared, m squared omega squared over uh, four h bar squared times x squared, that's the first term, minus two alpha, two times m omega over two h bar. Let me just cancel some of these terms. And for the exponential term, this is what they all look like. 
um, they multiply to this commonly, so there's the exponential term from here, and there's the, the other exponential term. So it's going to be e to the minus n omega over h bar x squared dx. Okay, um, the this integral is actually something that uh, you should have memorized because um, this is what we kind of started out with in part A, the integral of uh, this um, e to the minus alpha x squared is square root of pi over alpha. So that's uh, what it's going to be. Um, so integral of uh, just uh, this portion here with the second term is going to give me square root of pi over alpha or uh, pi times h bar over m omega. Now, this term here with e to the minus m omega, so it, the x squared portion is going to end up in um, square root of, uh, I think it was pi over 4 alpha to the third power. Yeah. So it's going to be pi alpha to the third power h bar to the third over 4 m to the third, omega to the third. So, so yeah, let me just write this out so that I can simplify them and we'll see where we are at. Minus h bar squared, square root of m omega over pi h bar. Uh, let me, so these are all constant coefficients that were included in this result. So I have m squared, omega squared over h bar squared times now the result from the integral square root of pi h bar to the third over 4 m third omega to the third minus um, these coefficients that were not part of the integral m omega over h bar times the square root of pi h bar over m omega from the integral all right, uh, let's see what cancels. Um, I think, yeah, this leading term, it does a lot of good cancellation. So I can see that its entirety cancels this entirety. And let me just uh, make sure I do this cancellation right. So uh, m cancels out one factor of m, omega cancels out one factor of omega, h bar cancels one factor of h bar, pi cancels out pi, good. So I have square root of h bar over 2m omega squared. So, oh, so this is gonna be, um, so one factor of h bar that cancels this, one factor of m that cancels this, one factor of omega that cancels that, and I have two remaining still. Okay, so I have m omega over 2h bar, minus m omega over h bar. Oh, so this actually whole thing simplifies into this. Um, the, the algebraic clusters are the same. So this whole thing ends up being minus one half m omega over h bar. So h bars cancel, or well, some of it, can, let me just go through this. Minus the signs, they cancel each other. And uh, putting it all together, I have one half m omega h bar squared over h bar, so just to h bar. So that is my expectation value of momentum squared. And after all the simplification is done, it looks quite simple. And I do recommend for something like this that you do all the simplifications fully because there's a greater chance of making a mistake as you type in the expressions. So yeah, so that's the result for part C. And what's left here as a comment is that when you have this expression and you have this expression, you see that when you multiply them together, m omega cancels out and you are left with one fourth h bar squared. So you get this uh, result that 
um, the expectation value of standard deviation squared of x and standard deviation value squared of momentum is h bar squared over 4. So if you imagine taking square root of everything, you end up with h bar over 2, which is the minimum allowed uncertainty under the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. It's um, quite elegant result. Um, and not all states have this minimum uncertainty condition. Uh, you will find that ground state of uh, ground state of particle in a box, for example, don't uh, have this property. It's a few, only a few uh, known wave function solutions that do have this property.